So I really want this video to be part of a new trend that I do of videos, and that is to remember just to shoot a quick video of something that I might be setting up for myself personally that could benefit others. And that's what's going on this evening. So I need to spin up a quick Linux box inside of AWS so that I can do some experimentation and actually uh, proof some curriculum that is designed against uh, Linux for Linux Plus training. So anyways, I want a sent OS box. Now we have to remember, here I am on Windows 11 and I could go to the Microsoft store and we want to remind ourselves that wonderful distros of Linux are available right inside this Microsoft store. So let's just prove that. My search is up top. So if I say Linux and hit enter, I'm going to get all kinds of Linux distros. You're going to have Kali Linux in here, I'm sure. You're going to have all kinds of Linux variants, and that's great right at your fingertips. But, uh, you know, understand sometimes we don't want to load another operating system onto Windows 11. And what if I want to keep everything nicely in the cloud? One thing you don't want to do is inadvertently close the window you were going to do a demo of. Uh, so let me get back to my AWS console login, of course. Uh, I think it's going to let me right back in because I was just in session. Yes, great. So that was painless. So what we're going to do is just turn to, of course, the EC2 service inside of AWS. This is the Elastic Compute Cloud or Elastic Cloud Compute. Can never remember the order there. Not that important, I suppose. And notice when you come into this dashboard, I have my instances that are running here. You can see there are none of those and we are about to launch a new instance. And what's great about this is the sent OS that I'm going to pick in this demonstration is going to be, I'm sure, free tier. Uh, in fact, let me limit this to free tier only images so that this would be completely free if I was still in the free tier. I'm no longer in the free tier, but we'll just pretend I am in that one year of free tier access. Now, by the way, this will not be very expensive at all, uh, even if I am charged, and I probably will never get charged for this sent OS image. Now, what's interesting is the sent OS is not uh, available as one of the AMIs that Amazon makes readily available. So that's interesting. But notice there's plenty of AWS Marketplace uh, AMIs for sent OS or CentOS, depending on who's pronouncing it. And notice I would love... Uh, version 7.0 right here, and this is free tier eligible. Awesome. So I will select this and we will go through the install. Notice that it's giving me the total cost per hour if I were to run it on, you know, some pretty massive systems, it would get pricey, $13 an hour. But notice it's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a penny when you're running it on these smaller uh, instances. And of course, the instance choice is going to make the free tier eligibility, you know, a reality. So notice we're going to pick this one right here that is free tier eligible. It gives me one virtual CPU and one whopping gig of memory, but that's more than enough for the experimentation with this Linux Plus curriculum that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to choose all right, let's go to the instance details and I will put this, uh, I'll put this in my default uh, VPC. In fact, it's good for me to demo this because if you've just spun up your brand new AWS account, that's all you'll have for a virtual private cloud would be your default. So I'll demonstrate how you can use this default VPC for this little practice Linux box. Uh, for a subnet, I'm going to say no preference, put it anywhere in uh, any subnet in any availability zone. And let me state it properly. It's the default subnet in any availability zone 
that it will place me in, that's fine. We're going to have it auto assign a public IP address so we can get to it. And uh, for the host name type, we'll just have it do an IP name, that's fine. We don't want to do anything fancy with DNS here, nothing fancy with any of these advanced settings. So we will just say, we're ready to take a look at the storage you're going to give us. It's going to give us eight gigs of general purpose SSD. That's absolutely perfect. And next we'll want to add tags. We should add a name tag, certainly. And I'll name this uh, Linux underscore plus underscore practice. And I will add another tag and this will be, how about purpose? Notice I can create whatever tags and values that I want here. Purpose, this is lab practice. Okay, so I've got some nice tags there. Next up, very important, is the security group. So it will create a new security group, give it this name, and it's going to allow SSH into this box from absolutely any source IP. Now I'm gonna leave it that way because this is a little lab practice system that I'm gonna shut down immediately after I've used it. So I'll leave it open like this for this demonstration, but understand that it would be a really good idea to fire up another tab right now and do a simple like, what is my IP address, right? And you could and you should go ahead and stick your 32-bit IP address. Let's say mine was, I'll just say, my IP address just happened to be 100, 100, 100, 100. What are the odds, right? But let's say I wanted to lock this down to my IP, which would be a great idea from a security perspective. That's how you would do it. We're going to say, okay, we're not locking it down by source IP address. Not a good idea, but you know why I'm doing it just to make this demonstration quicker for you. Easier to consume, as we say. All right, here's the review of what I'm setting up. I'm going to click launch and I'm going to create a new key pair just as you would. And we'll call this my Linux underscore plus underscore KP for key pair. And we have to download this key pair. Now, when you're dealing with your key pairs, notice I'm going to come right in and go to my downloads folder and I am going to cut this thing uh, out of there, out of the downloads, and I'm going to drop it into an AWS keys folder that I have in OneDrive. And I have the permissions set on this so that the AWS won't have an issue. In other words, the everyone Windows group doesn't have read permissions, for example. So get in the habit of, you know, getting yourself a good, perfectly secured AWS keys location that you'll be consistently uh, tucking those keys into. And so now I'm ready to say launch instance, let's go. I want to get in and start practicing on this distro of Linux. So it says, okay, we're launching it for you. And it says, let's go ahead and take you to your instance right now, if you like. So I'm gonna click on there and there is our nicely named Linux plus practice image. And we can see that the state is pending right now as it's trying to figure out what is going on with this virtual machine. But yeah, if I hit refresh or even just wait, notice it is now in the running state and we're ready to connect to this thing. So I will click on the image and say connect and it has options for connection. We're just gonna go ahead and use the SSH right into this machine and they even give us the example syntax. So I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. I'm then gonna go down here and launch a command prompt and I am going to paste that wonderful syntax in and it says, ah, can't find the key. And that's because I didn't go into the appropriate directory. So I'm gonna do my change directory. We're gonna go into OneDrive and it was the AWS underscore keys directory. 
And now from the correct directory where the key is located, I will issue that command and we will SSH into our machine, except it is not accepting our connection. All right, so this is great. We have something to troubleshoot. So the connection was refused from our box. Okay, so it sure looks like the security group is the problem. And let's go take a peek at it. So I'm going to click on EC2. By the way, this was totally unplanned troubleshooting. That's always the best kind, right? Uh, when you're creating videos for YouTube, that is. All right, so let me uh, find my security groups. There they are. And there is the security group that we are using for this image. And we are allowing SSH port 20, uh, 22. And it is going to be from any source. Let me clear that. Ah, right here. So from anywhere. Yeah, I think that's what I had in there, though, right? All right, well, let's try this. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, yeah, this group is done correctly. And before it was custom, now I did select the, you know, source can be from any IP address. So I've saved these changes. And now we are ready to slide back over to the command prompt. I'm going to go up on the keyboard to get that syntax back in there. And look at that. It was the security group. So we are now in our sent OS uh, image there up on the interweb. And I didn't have to install anything locally on my machine. Oh, by the way, this is how you can easily shut down the machine. This stop instance right here inside the console is the simple way we would do that. Um, and so now, of course, if I come back to the instance, notice we have been logged out. And notice that is a graceful shutdown that it did. So there you have it. A great way to get practice with these different operating systems. Thanks so much for watching, everyone.